What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Southeastern 14. Brian Edwards, Jay Greason. We call it Bets and Ball Games with Edwards and Greason. This is our November 30th edition. Jay is in Chattanooga. I am in Santa Rosa Beach, Florida. What's going on, my man? Not much. Uh, normally, I am downtown at the TFP offices. I'm here at the uh, Glacial Greason Estates. Uh, just trying to uh, figure out how we can do bets and ball games, but I think we need to take a moment. We need to pass the hat. Your Florida Gators were game. They lost a tough one. My Auburn Tigers got kicked in the nuts. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. We're going to get to so, all that. Go ahead. It is. Hey, that is hey, there are two things that I think are imperative to talk about in a conversation about SEC football. One, it is coaching malpractice to only rush two and keep a spy on granted, Jalen Milrow had run all over Auburn, but on fourth and 31, you want that dude to run. So Keeping a spy on him is coaching malpractice. So that last play, I put on the coaches. There are a whole lot of things I could put on the players, but you know what? They played their heart out. Here's yep. the other thing of this I'm going to say as an Auburn fan mm -hmm. and an Auburn optimist. They were one possession from beating the two teams, one possession from beating Georgia, and one play from beating Alabama with the worst roster Hugh Freeze is ever going to have. All so that. You're come get us. Come get us now. And hey, at me all you want. My Twitter's there. Hey, come get us on uh, Southeastern 14, whatever you want to say. And two years from now, when if Auburn gets fed up with Hugh Freeze, and he calls a bunch of hookers on on some cell phones and does whatever else, fine, come at me. But he was damn close to beating both of them with the worst roster he's going to have. 100%. So everything else, hey, you, you had your heart broken uh, in the swamp in a very similar situation, but you don't have the same optimism I do. No, hell no, hell no, hell no. Agreed on all that 100%. Let's, uh, we're going to get back to all of that. But first, let's uh, tell you that everything is off and rolling. We got all the major sports leagues and college basketball at Bet Online, which remains your top spot for all your live betting action and contest. NFL, college football, UFC, and NHL are all in full swing. Bet Online is your number one source for wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions. All the hoops betting action along with every sport available at your fingertips with both desktop and mobile access at any time. Head to the bet head to bet online today and remember to use our promo code all caps B L E A V. Let me repeat that. Our promo code is in all caps B L E A V for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts yes so and like in the like was the other night more of a heartbreaker than bryce young 97 yards and 12 plays and yeah the force yes. overtime and then four overtimes yes, yes. It, it was probably uh, better to get rid of harson that y'all did lose that game actually no i mean either or that that that, that was the stakes weren't the same for the kick six, but damn. I mean, Bill Simmons, who made a career out of doing what a whole lot of us now try to do and communicate to people on various platforms, and kudos to him, he came up with the levels of losing. And number two was the gut punch, and number one was the kick to the nuts. 
this was a bona fide number one level loss. You had – you probably had a number three level loss of, damn it, but when when – when the Florida State running back found his way in the end zone, you knew that how that was going to work out. Oh. I mean, I had a chicken wing in my mouth, and I just spit the whole thing out. I mean, thank God I quit drinking, because dear Lord, I would have gone on a rampage. <laughs> I mean, holy buckets, man! So I, mean, I was. That that's a that's a bona fide. I'm trying to think of an Auburn loss that is. There are Auburn losses that are more meaningful, like Travis Benjamin catching the ball in the end zone to win a national oh, championship. When you should have okay, been up 35 at halftime, you should have been up 35 at halftime. Uh. Shanahan not running the ball in the second half up 28-3 with the Falcons and we maybe could win a Super Bowl. I'm just trying to think as a fan, I was sitting there and I started to believe and I said, because here's the roller coaster they got me on. The first two possessions, I thought that was going to be 47-0. Mm-hmm. Auburn, Auburn goes three and out and goes 19 yards back or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Alabama gets the ball and runs it down our throat. And and Quickly. I hate people, and I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't say that. I hate people who do the we and R and whatever else. They run the because I've I've never I've never put pads on. I've never coached, I've never been sat in a coaching meeting. I'm I just paid tuition at Auburn. That's all I did. So, but you look up and you're thinking, holy buckets, there's a chance. And then you look up and then you believe. Oh, my goodness. There's not only a chance. We're competing. And then you look up and it's not, we're just competing. We're going to win this thing. win this football game. Yeah. And then, holy (laughs) chimneys, they ripped my guts out. Oh, yes, yes. I was trying to think of my biggest heartbreakers. Choke choke at Doak, which was a tie. Um, The Swamp Swindle. The Duval, the wind game at Jordan-Hare when Duval was like five for five, including the game winner when the wind was blowing 30, 40 miles an hour. Talking about Florida Auburn. Remember that? Oh, yeah. No, I've, oh, I've, oh got, I've got a, I've got a, I've got a picture of Duvall running off the field doing this because he was a lifelong Gator fan, and now I'll, I will tell you this: uh, got to be in the heartbreak with oh, October fifteenth, ninety four. But uh, Patrick Nix to Frank Sanders, it's up there. It's up there. I think that was only the second time we'd ever been number one. Also, if I'm not mistaken, hey. Along those lines, and, and before we get into, we got a whole bunch of conference championship stuff to get into, especially the SEC title game. How is Bo Nix the betting favorite for the Heisman over Jaden Daniels? Well, I was looking at his stats, and um, they're pretty good, but I don't—they're not as good as Daniels. And I, but like, like. I, I mean, look, if Washington wins this game and it's more about defense necessarily than Penix, you know, I still think that, that Jane Daniels has got a good shot at it. I'm pulling up the odds right now, by the way. Um, go ahead. Go, while well, I'm pulling up the odds, whatever you got to say. So, I mean, Jane Daniels has accounted for 413 yards per game total offense. That's like... 50 north of anybody else in the country. He's got 50 total touchdowns. That's seven better than anybody else in the country. He is... His QBR is 5% better than anybody else in the country. So we're going to... 
it's a conversation, I guess, in some ways about in the NFL and in Major League Baseball, the MVP normally is the most valuable player on a guy who, on, who is on the great team. And I can understand that because that creates value because you've now won whatever you were achieving to win. The Heisman has always been an individual award. Yep. So if we are, I mean, let's change the verbiage or there's no possible way. And I love Bo Nix. I love, I love his storyline. Even as an Auburn grad, he had every right to leave us. Even as an Auburn uh, second generation Auburn quarterback. And I knew his dad at Auburn. But uh, there's no possible way you can tell me Bo Nix had a better season than Jaden Daniels. There's no way you can convince me of that. Yeah. And, and we'll see with, with the last little chapter before the Heisman vote's got to go in um, what goes down. So, Nick's 37 to 2 TDI and T ratio, Daniels 40 to 4 TDI and T ratio, Daniels 1,134 rushing yards, 8.4 yards per carry. And the eight, 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 that counts sacks. College, that counts sacks. Yes. College, college, college counts sacks. Yes. God, what would it be? Like 14 or 15? Per, probably. probably, probably. I mean, he, when he takes off on those scrambles, I mean, he usually does get a minimum of twelve yards and a well, lot of twenty-five. And, and hey, range. there is there's very few things as scary. There are two things that are the, the, that this year in college football that scared me the most. One, Nick Saban starting to grab both sides of the podium with that Coca-Cola bottle here and. And the other one is Jaden Daniels looking this way and running that way. Yes. Because when he runs that way, it's like a 50-yard game. By the way, did you get on his rushing yards prop against AM last week? Uh, well, I, I'm just – hey, I'm just trying to continue to fund my kids' college education. <laughs> I'm just trying to – I'm just trying to be a good dad. You know what I'm saying? So, so the answer is yes. I'm just trying to be a good dad. I'm just trying to be a good dad. There you go. All right, so back to the stats. Daniel's 10 rushing TDs. Now, Nix did not run it as effectively this year. He did have six rushing TDs, but only 159 yards, so almost a 1,000 less than Daniel's. And let's be honest, that was the worst LSU defense we've seen in 20 or 30 years, at least 20. And so it's not Daniel's fault that, they're nine and three, and right. if Oregon if Oregon loses Saturday, they're only one back of them in the loss column, and uh, you know. Well, see, and, and and that's the point here. We're we're hinging the Heisman on whether Oregon beats Washington. This is an individual award because right. if Washington wins, Bo Nix loses. Right. Yeah, and, and look, so so LSU's losses um, at Bama, number look at, eight, eight. What did the defense give up in their three losses? Uh, well, well, 55 to um, Ole Miss, 55-49, Ole Miss number 11, uh, 42 to Bama. Um, and um, what is their – 45 why? to FSU? Oh, yeah, 45 to FSU. Correct. F oh, so, so they lost number four – Number eight and number eleven, and none of those games were in Baton Rouge, and and none of them were because the offense didn't produce. Right, and and don't get me wrong, I'm not I'm not saying Bo Nix and his team did not deliver, but sweet Jesus, man, USC yeah, no. doesn't tackle. I mean, they'd be a good flag football team. Yo, I mean, and, and they got to play Colorado. I mean. Hey, Dion, good to see you. I mean, how long is he here there? I mean, I don't know. We got we got a lot of things to get to. You got you got to get to the agenda. Hey, I'm gonna get on a tangent. I got a lot <laughs> of things to get to today. Yeah, we could we could get on many tangents, but let's start with Alabama and Georgia, 4 p.m. Eastern on C. 
BS and at this very moment we are looking at uh, Georgia as a favorite and I'm trying to find bet online and here we go uh, bet online has Georgia as a six point favorite um, and a total of 54 and a half so if you like Bama, that's one of the best numbers you're going to find uh, at Bet Online. So if you like Bama, get to our good friends at Bet Online at Bet Bama Plus Six or the over under uh, 54 and a half. The money line uh, price on Bama is plus 187. And the first half uh, number uh, for Georgia is minus three at a minus 115. Uh, price and then for the total in the first half we have 27 and a half points all right I'll start with what I like I am gonna go over um, I got 53 and a half early in the week but I'm good with it up to 54 or even 55 so the over is on a 7 0 and one run for Alabama to improve to 9 two and one overall however not all of those overs would be overs with this 54 point total but the four Alabama games uh, prior to the Auburn game they did have combined scores of 76 70 70 again and 54 which would be a push. Um, and Milrow, the last seven games, 15 to 3 TDI and T ratio for the season, 21 to 6 TDI and T, TDI and T ratio, 439 rushing yards, 12 touchdowns. Alabama's 18th in the nation in scoring, 35.8 points per game. Georgia's sixth in the country in total yards, eighth in both passing yards and scoring, 39.6 points per game. Um, I don't have any fresh news on Lad McConkey. He was questionable at last look uh, for Georgia. Um, I have. I don't think Jason McClellan is going to play uh, for Alabama. I don't think that's that. I mean, he's their leading rusher, uh, obviously, and a you know a heck of a player. And I will give you his stats as I'm getting to them right here. Um, but. Uh, they're, 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 I mean, it's Alabama. They got, it is uh, Alabama. they I mean, got, they got right. Hey, whoever's behind Jace McClellan is a guy that would start for every other team that you root for. Yes. So it is behind that. Uh, I know Lad McConkey is listed as questionable. I know, I, you know what? Kirby Smart has major league Yavos. And I mean by Yavos, I mean like Major League Two in the movie with uh, Pedro Serrano, and he was looking at the Japanese guy, and he was doing the 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 ball dance down the Major League Yavos to sit uh, a whole bunch of kids who could have played, but they knew they were going to be Tech. They knew they were going to be Tech. Man, I hate betting against Nick Saban. I hate it. I hate everything about it. You're doing it this week? You're doing it. I did it last week. Oh, you took Auburn when you won? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. You did end up taking Auburn. You didn't want anything to do with it when we recorded on Wednesday, but we had 72 hours before kickoff. Uh, Here's the thing. Vegas incorporates the umbrella principle of how we feel. They incorporate that everybody wants to bet on the Dallas Cowboys, that everybody wants to bet on Notre Dame, that everybody believes that Bill Belichick uh, is coaching his hoodie off, even though Tom Brady has walked off into the sunset. Everybody wants to believe that Nick Saban is the dark Lord and God bless him. He may be Emperor, Emperor Palpatine. I don't know. I, I, and you know what? I don't really even care, but here's what I do think. 
Georgia's got more dudes. Not by a lot, but probably. Not by a lot, but probably. <laughs> if it's pick them, I'm picking Georgia. But I'm, I'm, I'm staying away from the side. Go ahead, finish. No. And you know what? Uh, I'll go you a step further. Neutral side's going to be home field for, for Kirby's boys. Not by a lot. You don't think Alabama's going to bring 40,000? No. 30? Nope. You don't think they're going to bring 30? Nope. They got 30 that live in Atlanta. No. <laughs> no, they don't. They no. don't have 30. They don't? They don't have 30,000 alumni in Atlanta? Alabama alumni can't afford to live in Atlanta. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so glad. Oh, you did. I'm. Hey, oh. I'm still better. I'm, I'm so apologize to Southeastern 14. I know. I. I'm sorry. I'm still upset from last Saturday. I'm bitter. It is what it is. I'm sorry. I. I didn't mean that. I'm gonna, Sure you did, and it's fine. All right, <laughs> Jason McClellan. All right, this, this is what they're going to be missing. McClellan, 803 rushing yards, 4.8 yards per carry, six rushing touchdowns. But they've got Williams behind him, who's run for 497 yards, 5.3 yards per carry, four touchdowns. They also got Jam Miller and Justin Haynes, and I'm sure that they're dudes. So it is what it is with McClellan. Um just a, a couple other stats on the over. The last time these three have met in Atlanta in the Dome in SEC championship games, combined scores of 65, 63, and 60, and the over 6, 2, and 1 in the last nine head-to-head -head meetings between UGA and Bama. And one of the unders would not have gone under if Jamison Williams had not got injured in the, uh, what, early second when he was lighting those boys up already. And Mechie was out because he had, he had lit them up five weeks before, and um, there, there's a little question for you. Not that it's that big a deal, and I don't want to spend any time on it, but if Jamison Williams doesn't blow his knee out, uh, where are we in this rivalry right now? A, I think Bama wins that game and maybe wins it convincingly, and certainly if Mechie didn't tear his ACL. I mean, that's irrelevant. Georgia won, and then they won again. But the last time these two teams met, Alabama had beaten them by 17 five weeks before, and we're off to the lead, and Jamison Williams was picking up right where he had left off, and then he blows his knee out, and then that completely switched that game. I feel like in some ways it's like that movie Mr. Destiny where he pointed out the differences in where things happen. And – if things change accordingly, then God bless. But we can't we can't roll the dice and be in a nebulous way of college football because the biggest Mr. Destiny conversation is what if Rich Rod had taken the job as opposed to Nick Saban? Or and or, or what if Drew Brees gets cleared by the Miami Dolphins medical staff. And Dan, by go, Danny Cannell's dad. It's, instead of Dante Culper, Culper yes. passed his prime heavy. And then, goes, and then Saban wins like five Super Bowls. And then he's and the, the greatest college coach and the greatest NFL coach of and, all time. And the Saints are still over for life on Super Bowls and not us. Yes. Stupid Ooh. Saints. Stupid, Stupid Dante Dr. Culper. Dr. Cannell. Dr. Stupid Canals, stupid Canal family. I, <laughs> right. I I just want to punch somebody. Right. Or I'm going to eat some Fritos. I mean, whatever. Uh, yeah, but all of that is fair. But but my only point with that is that I think in Alabama's mind, they still – you're still my bitch. Because remember, they had not beaten them since Matthew Stafford threw a touchdown at Bryant-Denny in like 08 in overtime. And so I think Alabama's mindset is – Y'all are still my bitch. That was really my only point. Well, didn't they? I mean. Yeah, they beat them without Mechie and Williams. Uh, they did. Yeah, I mean, they but didn't, did. I mean, yeah, but okay. 
I mean, right. injuries are still part of the game, brother. Sure, I'm not taking anything away from Georgia. I'm just saying that I suspect that Alabama's mindset is, you're still my bitch, and I'm going to treat you like my bitch like I always See, did. Here, here, Here's the thing that scares me about back in Georgia this week. But I'm still back in Georgia because I think they got enough dudes. And I think McConkey and I think Bowers plays. This oh, is I know the, Bowers playing, yeah. This is the very rare occasion that Nick Saban can walk into the locker room and say, nobody believes in you. Right. And I it's mean, real. Hey, this, is, this is the biggest underdog a Nick Saban Alabama team has been ever. Uh, no, 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 no. Were they, right now. they, were they a five-point underdog? Five oh, no, and a half. Hold on, my, my, you remember? Time out. Remember? Remember my squad? We we had it rolling back in 08 and 09. Remember? Okay. Yeah. Uh, and on, they me, punched me, you in the face. Not in 08. Let me see what that line was in 08. Um. I. I mean. I'm trying to think. Hold on. Figure out the the dead space, but. All right, so at the very least, if we're talking 08, this is the biggest underdog spot for an Alabama football team in 15 years. They were 10 point under. 15 years. They were 10 point underdogs to the Mighties back when we were still the Mighties. Yeah. And they didn't cover. (laughs) Who didn't cover? (laughs) Alabama didn't cover. We won 31 to 20. Two touchdown drives in the fourth quarter right in front of me. Oh, they were wonderful. But those days are long gone. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just playing the over, man. Are you – no no involvement and in, no interest in the no, title? No, I, 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 I love the over. I think the over is the smartest play on the board. Yeah. But uh, I actually think there is too much public play on Bama. There – you and I know this. There's a whole lot of the, – the vast majority of tickets are on Bama and the number still goes north towards Georgia. That means the sharp, me bigger, the sharp, bigger bets are on Georgia. The smarter people than you or me uh, feel pretty good. As long as you can get this under a touchdown – I gotta go Georgia, but I think I agree with you. My my pick is the is the over. I, I don't think this. I, I've been asked this by several Bama fans this week. Is it gonna get to seven? And I said no. I said if you want seven and you can get a six and a half and buy it to seven, do that. I I, I think at any point when there was one offshore at six and a half uh, here a minute ago, but um. I think at that point, the money will come back in on Bama. And so I, I think it's going to remain a, a five to six. You had any speculation on that? Uh, I think it's going to be in, in that neighborhood. But I also think if you see anything that resembles seven, even six and a half, get it. Because I think the – the Vegas money is going to push it down. I think it's going to be close. Hey, and if you want Georgia, wait till Saturday morning because I think I think there's going to be a whole lot of people. The public money is going to push it closer to under five before kickoff. All right, let's move on to some other uh, games. Where you want to start? You want to start with Oregon, Washington, or Oak State and Texas? Uh... What you think? Uh, uh, I'm happy to start with Oregon, Washington. Holy cow, brother. You and I talked about this game a couple of weeks ago. Did you in a million years expect Washington to get double digits? No, because, I mean, we talked about how this line had basically, I, I want to say three weeks ago, it was five and a half. Then it was six and a half. What was it last week? I don't know. I, maybe it was still six and a half. But, um, it was still six and a half last week. That's what I thought. And, that's what I thought. And I know they played a rivalry game, and but 
Holy God. I would – hey, do I think Oregon wins the game? Yeah, I kind of do. If we can't turn down. Washington at 11, which a whole lot of sites have it at now, how can you not play that? You, ha- you have to play Washington at double digits. Our good friends at Bet Online have the game at 10 right now uh, with a total of 65 and a half. I agree with that. I mean, Washington beat them in Eugene last year, and they beat them at home this year. So I got to go with uh, Washington. And I'm also going uh, with the over, and I might like the over even more. Uh, so the total 65 and a half at Bet Online. So they played th- a 36 33 game for 69 uh, earlier this year. And um, when they played last year, uh, 37 34 Washington for 71 combined. I'm not going to bore you with all the stats, but you know Washington and Oregon are in the top 10 of all of them, if not top five, if not top two or three. And Penix and Knicks have been lights out. Now, I know Washington's offense has not been as productive here the last couple of weeks. But, um, yeah, I like the over. And I, I, I can't turn down Washington at that number. No, I I, I actually uh, – the, the over in the Pac-12 game – Feels like that. That's the only play you can make. You can't bet under in a Pac-12 game. No. But holy cow, man! If you can get Washington plus eleven in a game that's going to be a fist fight and a game that Washington has beat them the last two times they've been out there, and I know Bo Nix is having a great year. I don't know if Bo Nix is better than my, better than Michael Penix. I mean, I don't, oh. I don't know either. Like, I, I'm gonna call it a push for now. Let's see what right. happens. Let's see what happens. Sat- or is it Friday? But, it's Friday. Night. So if we've got even quarterbacks on a neutral field with equal stakes of trying to get in the national championship playoff, and all of those things come together, give me the team getting double digits. Hundred percent. All right, let's move to Jerry World AT and T Stadium, noon Eastern, uh, on Saturday. And our good friends at Bet Online have Texas favored by fifteen, with a total of fifty-four and a half. I am involved on the side, which I'll get to in a moment. What uh, what are you thinking here? You and I are on different sides here. I, I guarantee it. You you you're gonna back the mullet, and I know it, cause you love the mullet, and and that's cool, and whatever else. Texas is gonna beat their ass, period. All right, that was quick. Uh, quick analysis. All right, so my analysis is that Oklahoma State has the head coaching advantage. Uh, They dominated the rivalry over the last decade. They won in Stillwater uh, last year. They won in Austin uh, two years ago. They are 7-3, and both straight up and ATS in the last 10 head-to-head meetings. Uh, Gundy, I think, has done one of his best coaching jobs of his career, and that's saying a lot. Now, it it concerns me that Bowman, you know, is not that good at quarterback um, because he's got more interceptions, 11, than he has touchdowns. But there is a dude named Ollie Gordon who's run for 136 yards or more and a lot more in most of the the seven of the last eight games where he's gotten that much. For the year, 6.4 yards per carry. Oklahoma State's been an underdog five times this year. They're 4-1, and both straight up and ATS in those five games. And their last eight, regardless of home away, favorite dog, whatever, they are 7-1 and and... Uh, Gundy's only been a double-digit underdog seven times since late in the 14, 2014 regular season, going 5-2 and two ATS with three outright wins. Texas on a six-game winning streak, but four of those wins by 10 points or fewer. Brooks out with the ACL tear. C.J. Baxter gets banged up last week. Uh, questionable at last look. I mean, I'm sure they've got a good dude at third or fourth string, kind of like Bama. But uh, for all those reasons, I think Oklahoma State hangs within the number and covers Texas wins. 
You've well, already said all, all, are you we can go to another game if you don't have No, no hey, let's hey, let's go let's go to another game. I I knew you were back in the mullet. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. I'm good. Go. I feel comfortable sure with cuz here's the other thing. And we're going to talk about this through whether we were and we we maybe should have talked about it with uh and we're going to talk about it in the Big 10, I guess, but Style points matter. Yeah. And, I mean, I think Texas realized that uh, last week. Now, Oklahoma State's better, but, no, I, 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 think, I, think, I think Texas is going to put their best foot forward. And uh-huh. I don't have stats and I don't have injuries and I don't have a whole lot of other things, but – uh, what I do have is uh, yeah, more do, more on <laughs> fourth and thirty-one. <laughs> shut up! Will you shut hey, up? I lost two, man. I you lost shut them. up! <laughs> you shut up! Okay. All right. Which, uh, you want to go to the Big Ten? I don't like anything in this game. In fact, I kind of think I was going to cover. No. You, but I'm you not playing play it. You got to play me over here. You got to play me over here. I'm not right? playing. Hey, oh wait, did you know? Do you know what Iowa's team total in the first half is? Isn't it like point five? <laughs> yes, at even money for the over. You got to lay no. juice if you want the under. Well, <laughs> yeah, at that point in time, don't you have to put it like a point two point five or two point <laughs> right. five to at least be respectful? Sure. Because I mean. Sh- Crap! I almost, I almost said a dirty word on our Southeastern 14 podcast. But, I mean, if you're going to – holy cow. 0.5 is your first half over Team under. Total. All right. Big picture question. Is there a bigger uh, father-son travesty – than Kirk Ryan's hiring <laughs> his his son so, to turn that Iowa offense into like I mean it's like a mud it's like a mud bog at, is what they do. There there is one that comes to mind. I'm not going to say it's worse than Kirk and Brian Ferentz, but uh, toward the tail end of Bowden's career, now nah, not. Not Terry and not Tommy, who had some successful head coaching stints. Jeff was the OC, and yes, things went south. Well, hey, not what about south. Spurrier and Spurrier Jr.? Where in South Carolina? Yeah, he didn't have Junior calling the plays, did he? I don't no. know if he had him calling the plays, but uh, that dude couldn't coach a dog to go poop outside i mean i mean right, so let's let's get back, mean, in, back back to focus let's not talk about junior right, let's, right, talk let's, about H, okay. let's not talk about let's talk about hbc's family gonna, we don't just spend a whole lot of time on the big 10 on the big 10 title game because it's gonna be boring as hell uh i you gotta go over 34 and a half because i think michigan's gonna get over that on their own ball and they may they may um, Cooper DeGene, the best, uh, it's going to be a first round pick, uh, and a great punt returner as well. Best, uh, defensive player for Iowa. He's out. He's been out a couple weeks, but just reminding folks, um, I have no play on Michigan, Iowa probably will not watch a play. So Louisville at FSU. Now, I mean, these teams aren't inspiring a whole lot of gamblers, uh, trust right now. I mean, Look, Kentucky had lost five of six games with their only win at Mississippi State when Mississippi State was playing without Will Rogers. And Louisville had them at home. They had gotten their ass kicked uh, four years in a row by them. I mean, three real legit pimp slaps. One was 26 to 13. But Louisville at home, you're better, you're favored. Kentucky wins outright. And then the Knolls, Florida's defense, how many points have we given up the two previous games? What, 33 to Missouri? 
uh, 100 to LSU. I mean, and FSU had – they got a touchdown like with a minute left in the first half for their first score, or some something like that. I mean, FSU does not look very good, in my opinion. Well, it, uh, the analysis of both of these teams struggling is completely fair. Uh, the analysis of both of these teams limping into this title game is completely fair. But how many FSU players start for FSU? How many Louisville players start for FSU? I'm sorry. How many Louisville players start for FSU? And uh, some. Some, maybe. And you know what? The QB2 who played last week, who right I said on Twitter was – uh, had the same name as uh, from the the little kid baseball movie. Uh, Bad News Bears. Yeah, Henry Roden. Henry Roden uh from uh, where the kid had his arm uh, electrified and and went and pitched for the Cubs. Uh, that kid's now got another start under his belt. I, I love – LSU is a, – a FSU is my favorite play on the week. Truth. Really? Yes. Wow. Okay, I don't have a play on that game. I, I just thought that – I know Florida sucks, and we uh, should have won that game last week. So, anyhow. Um, all right. I do have a couple more picks, and so I'll just quickly share that I like Tulane – uh, SMU star quarterback who had been balling uh, out with a season-ending uh, leg injury. Uh, Tulane, they've won 10 in a row since the Week 2 home loss to Ole Miss, which, by the way, they led outright most of that game without Michael Pratt, who is their star, 21-4 to TDI and T-ratio, four rushing touchdowns. Preston Stone and S- SMU's been on a roll, and Preston Stone was playing great, but now – they're going to the backup, Kevin Jennings, who uh, is in his second year. He does have pretty good stats, but I, I suspect it's pretty much all at garbage time. So I don't really know what to you know, think of this guy. But, I mean, look, just you're two lane at home. If you can buy the half point, let's see what Bet Online uh, has that at right now. That uh, over-under is very affordable right now at 47, 47 and a half. And a half. Yep, and three and a half. Uh, for Tulane at a minus 108 price. So buying that half point to three won't cost quite as much. That's what I say do. I like Tulane minus three. Uh, I, I I like the total in that game, and that was on my list of plays. Over? Uh, oh, oh, 100% over. That's 100% I mean. over. Uh, and even with the quarterback injury, that system is designed to score – and if you look at what SMU puts on the board, they score a lot of points and they want to play fast, which uh, I think you're getting great value. And, and I know the QB1 injury uh, creates some intrigue with Vegas, but holy cow, 47 and a half, every one of – all but one of SMU's games have gone over 47 and a half. Yeah, I would be surprised if this kid, Kevin Jennings, isn't pretty pretty damn good. I, I'd be surprised. I mean, really? This, so, hey, so, Brian, you're telling me you think you there are going to be some high school quarterbacks in Texas? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> Texas forever! Whoa! Wait, hey, where's Riggins? Where's Riggins? Come on now. Come on. Yeah, I think this uh, other quarterback from Texas can probably sling it around. And his stats, albeit at garbage duty, are pretty nasty, by the way. Uh, 18 to 24, three touchdowns, no picks. Um, Do you have an opinion on the Mac? I don't want to spend any time on it. I just want to say I do like Miami of Ohio plus eight. They, ever since they lost to Miami in week one, they've won 10 of their last 11. Uh, eight wins by 13 points or more. Their only loss at home to Toledo. That's who they're playing. They lost 21 to 17, but that was the game their starting QB got hurt. <clears throat> but now that the uh, backup's been able to get, you know, 
QB1 snaps at practice. He's a more dual threat guy. He's played okay, not great, but they're all about defense anyway. I like Miami of Ohio plus eight. What got you, got anything, you got anything on Boise UNLV or App State Troy? I will say I'm not against Troy in a money line parlay or a teaser, but App State's pretty on fire. I don't know that I want to lay six with Troy. Uh, no, I, a whole lot of these, you got to make certain you understand who's playing at home, who is, who's got what at stake beyond just playing in a conference championship to that end. I will tell you this. How can you not like New Mexico state plus 12 against Liberty? I've watched Liberty a lot. I watched them in all those Wednesday night games they played. Liberty scares me. I, I, don't get me wrong. When I saw the number, no, I was Liberty like, can run the football. No, I get it. And they got a whole lot of dudes who can run the football. But New Mexico State, since the early part when Diego Pavia was injured, <laughs> they've been like a top 15 football team in America. They've been good. Um, now let's see. They lost that. Uh, they lost that heartbreaker to Jacksonville State last week, didn't they? Did you know that? Yeah. But I mean, Jacksonville State's really, really good too. Um, yeah. No, I, I, I think New Mexico State is nothing to try. Oh, so they did play at Liberty. Okay. Now this game. Oh, it is at Liberty. Yeah. Now I wonder. Okay, I want to. I need to look up that box score because it was thirty three seventeen Liberty. I, I don't know if if that was when Pavia was injured. I don't to... think he played. Okay, well that's huge then. That it, that would make me maybe be interested in uh, the Aggies. Well, I we we were kicking around conversations. That's my dog chewing on a toy. What's the dog's name? Bo Jackson? Uh, that one's Coco. Uh, the other dog. <laughs> the other dog is a big English bulldog that looks just like Uga. Because uh, my wife went to Georgia. That's right. Okay. I think you've told me this. And before. his name is Bo Jackson. Huh? Okay. It looks like Pavi only played half the game, so maybe this is when he got injured because they did have another quarterback in uh, that game. Before he got injured, he did have 65 rushing yards on nine uh, carries. Um, so, you like New Mexico State. Um, and, by the way, uh, that is, like like Jay was alluding to, that's a true road game. It's a, a true road game for Boise State going to Vegas. It's a true road game for for SMU going to New Orleans. It's a true road game for App State uh, going to Southern Alabama, whereas it's true neutral in Indy for Michigan, Iowa, and Charlotte, Louisville, FSU. As Jay noted, not so neutral in his opinion for Florida, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, yeah, it used to always be Florida, Alabama. Now, now no more. <laughs> Georgia, Alabama. And Oak State, Texas is in Arlington. So that's true neutral, although that'll be mostly uh, Texas. All right, we're getting running out of time. Do we need to throw out any NFL or any hoops? I know it's not as big of a hoops. Uh, I would, man, that do that ass beating Kentucky put on Miami. That's a legit Miami team, and my God, Jeff Shepard's son is good. Have you looked at his stats, brother? I hey, this is how old I am. And I'll, 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 I'll fluff the, the gray whiskers. I covered Jeff Shepard when he was in high school at McIntosh. Peach, Peach Tree City? Yes. And that white dude would dunk on you like nobody's business. Yes. So, uh... I'm actually – I'm intrigued about where the trajectory of Calipari's team is going to go. 
because this is a big year for him. Oh, this and I was. Know, hey, we've got a whole lot of basketball conversations to have in bets and ball games, but man, that Kentucky performance against Miami. I know it was at home, and I know the Rupp crowd was really uh, fired up. That was impressive. Very impressive. Very, very, very impressive. And um, sort of on the way out here, I kind of want to get back to my tweet from yesterday morning about uh, Reed Shepard. Okay, so Reed Shepard's um, stat line, uh, was eight of 13 from the field, five of nine from three, 21 points, five boards, four to one assist to turnover ratio, three steals, one block shot. So now for the season, he's 30 of 46 from the field. This is a guard, 65.2% from the field, 19 of 30 from three, 63.3%. Has not missed a free throw. He averages 3.1 steals per game. He's a guard. He averages a block a game. 3.6 assists, 3.9 rebounds, 12.3. And I've looked at, he wasn't getting that many minutes in, in some of those like first two or three games. So this guy is legit. No, no, he can play. He is a dude. Catch and shoot from deep. <laughs> I a like dude. this guy. I like those guys. All right. Um, we better uh you know, wrap this up. Any NFL you wanted to get on or throw out? Uh, other than I'm ready for the Falcons to fire Arthur Smith. Oh, God. Oh! Me too. We, did, we did have it in the green room. Let's spend like 30 or 40 seconds on this. These announcers talking about how Kyle Pitts is working his way back. I, I wanted to break stuff the other day. I'm like, no, just Throwing the football. Not only is he the best player on the Falcons, he's a top 10 player in this league, period. He has been since his rookie year. Throw him the freaking ball, please. No, 100%. How can we not figure out? And, I mean, as much as you and I are have bought stock in Kyle Pitts, and as much as they have invested in B. John Robinson, who – they took ahead of Jalen Carter, who is going to be the NFL Rookie of the Year with Philadelphia because he is a mother bleeper who punches everybody in the face. Here's the other thing. Cordero Patterson's a dude. Yeah. I mean, you got playmakers all over the field. Can we not get the ball out and figure out a way to run? It it, it 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 it'll puzzle me to the end of time how Arthur Smith is not gone yet and how he is so inept at scoring points. I mean, look, the Saints had uh, like uh, four trips in the red zone. They they kicked five field goals. They moved the ball up. They should have won that game. Of but course we, they should have. But we won, and so now everybody's like, "Oh man, Arthur, great job." Pitts had we'll two targets. Yeah. No, no, God Almighty, we underachieved. No. Truth be told, and well, we'll carry this over to next week. Yep, the Falcons gotta... should lose every game so they can go get a QB one. Yes, that would be wonderful. That would be wonderful. I don't know if I can bet on the Jets though, <laughs> but I'm not betting on the Falcons. Trust me. Um, all right, so check out Jay's plays. At the newsletter, you see his Twitter. Pinestreetpress.com. There it is. And you see my Twitter. And uh, thank you for listening. Please continue to tell your friends. Uh, subscribe to Southeastern 14. Give us the little like button if you feel like it. And next week, well, we'll start getting into some bowl games. We'll have spreads. But we'll also start going deep on uh, some college hoops. So, for Jay Greason, I'm Brian Edwards. It's been Bets and Ball Games with Edwards and Greason, and we are over and out.